Hi, I'm Sarah Powell. I'm from the University of Texas at Austin, and I'm here to talk you through this stair tailored about word problem instruction, and right now we're focused on the ratios and proportions schema. So a schema refers to the underlying structure, the underlying structure of a word problem. And there are six schemas regularly in play in the elementary and middle school grades. So it's important, especially for middle schoolers, that they're aware of all of these six schemas because we can see them in word problems, on, in workbooks, and on different types of assessments. So this ratios and proportions schema describes relationships among quantities. So here's kind of a classic ratios and proportions word problem. There are 176 slices of bread and eight loaves. If there are the same number of slices in each loaf, uh, or in each loaf, how many slices of bread are in five? So here, the relationships that we're exploring are the slices of bread to loaves, slices of bread to loaves. And if there's 176 in eight loaves, how many slices of bread are in five? So we're trying to figure out the relationships among those quantities. We can also think about this problem. Yvette correctly answers 85% of the total questions on her test. She answers 34 questions correctly. What is the total number of questions on Yvette's science test? So here, if she answers 85 of 100 questions correctly, so 85%, then 34 is to what? So we're looking at the relationships between the correctly answered problems and the total number of uh, problems on the test. Now when we have the ratios and proportions problems, it's helpful to use a graphic organizer really similar to this one. So if this, then that. And you will notice that I, I use rectangles here and ovals there. So if I'm comparing slices of bread to loaves, then here I'm comparing slices of bread to loaves. Or if I'm at 85% of 100, then 34 is to what? So it helps you organize the information from these word problems. Another thing that's helpful is to ask a prompt. So here we can ask, are there relationships among quantities? If this is to that, then this is to that. And I just like to use my hands just like I did. Are there relationships among quantities? If this is to that, then this is to that. Really matches that graphic organizer. So let's go ahead and set up and solve this problem here. All right, I see a mix of numbers and words, which means I need to employ my attack strategy. The attack strategy that I always like to use is UPS check. And I'm gonna start the understanding of this problem by reading the problem. A bus travels 36 miles in 45 minutes. At this rate, how many miles would the bus travel in 60 minutes? So what am I focused on in this story? I'm focused on the miles that this bus is driving, but I'm also focused on the minutes, like how long does it take this bus to drive a certain number of miles? So I'm gonna be focusing on miles and minutes. I've got a good understanding of this problem. Now let's make a plan. I could ask myself, is this an equal groups problem where I have groups? with an equal number in each group? Mm, no. Is this a comparison problem where I have a set compared a number of times? Mm, no. Is this a ratios and proportions problem where if this is to that, then this is to that? Let's see, miles to minutes, miles to minutes. Yes, it is. So I'm going to solve this with my ratios and proportions graphic organizer. Get that set up pretty quickly there, all right? So my plan is to solve this as a ratios and proportions problem. All right, now we're going to solve the problem. So the bus travels 36 miles, so 36 miles in 45 minutes. So if the bus travels 36 miles in 45 minutes, then the question is how many miles, so I don't know that, I'm gonna mark that with my question mark, would the bus travel in 60 minutes? So I'm gonna check that off so I don't use that number again. So 36 is to 45, as question mark is to 60. Now, I've gotta solve this problem. Sometimes it's helpful writing this in abstract form. So 36 is to 45, as question mark is to 60. Now, I could look at the relationships um, among these numbers. I could see that 45 is 3 fourths of 60 and use that to figure out that 36 is 3 fourths of what number. Um, often, students will also cross multiply. I'll kinda of go that route today so we see what that looks like. So first, I'm going to do um, 60 times 36. So uh, zero, uh, 360, uh, so that is 2,160. And then I'm gonna divide that by 45. 
All right, so I can make four groups of 45 first, and I'm going to subtract there, and then I uh, bring down my zero, and I can then make eight groups of 45. Eight times 45 is 360. That leaves me with a remainder of zero. So I would say that my question mark is 48. And was 48 talking about miles or minutes? The question is, how many miles? So the best can try, 48 miles. And man, today is a messy day on my board, so I definitely want to circle that answer so that I know that that was the answer I was focused on. So 36 is to 45, as 48 is to 60. Lots of different ways that I could check that work. I could see if these are equivalent fractions there. Just want to make sure that I always solve my problem and I always go back and check my work. So with this ratios and proportions problem, we combined our tax strategy and focused in on the ratios and proportions schema to help us figure out that the bus could travel 48 miles in 60 minutes. Now I'm going to erase all of this artistry and I'll be right back to solve one more ratios and proportions problem. All right, so we have a word problem. I'm going to use my attack strategy, UPS check, to help guide my work through this word problem. Let's understand the problem by reading it. A crocodile is 18 feet long, an alligator is 3 fourths of that length. How long is the alligator? So let's think, I've got to figure out how long is the alligator, and I'm not gonna underline long, I guess I could, but I'm talking about feet in this problem. So I'm gonna underline feet. I wanna figure out how many feet long is the alligator. So I've got a basic understanding of the problem. Now I need to make a plan. So I could ask myself, well, is this a problem where if this is to that, then this is to that? So right now I'm thinking about the crocodile to the alligator, the crocodile to the alligator, so I'm gonna solve this as a ratios and proportions problem. And I'm gonna draw my graphic organizer because I'm comparing the length of the crocodile to the length of the alligator. Now, I've got my plan as a ratios and proportions problem. I do wanna make a note that some people may solve this as a comparison problem. Thinking about that um, we have a set, we have the crocodile, and then the alligator is only three fourths at times that set. And that's, that's fine to do uh, as well. Some of these word problems can be uh, solved using different schema or multiple schema. I'm gonna focus on this ratios and proportion schema right now to show you how that could be used to set up and solve this problem. All right, so the crocodile is 18 feet long and the alligator is 3 fourths of that length. So I'm gonna say the alligator is 3 fourths of the crocodile. I don't know how long that alligator is, but I do know that this crocodile is 18 feet long. So 3 fourths is the same as question mark over 18. Now how am I going to solve this? I'm gonna set this up in my abstract form, question mark, fraction bar, 18. And I could do some cross multiplication and then division. So 18 times 3, 54 and then figure out how many sets of four I can make with 54. And here I can make four times three, uh, let's see, four, that's 12. And then I have a remainder of two, which I could also interpret as five tenths. So how long is this alligator? The alligator is 13 and a half, or 13 and five tenths, and was that inches or feet, underline that a little earlier. So the alligator is 13 and a half or 13 and 5 tenths feet long. So we've solved the problem. And then how could I uh, plug, I could, how could I check this work? I could plug this here into my equation to ensure that 13 and a half is equivalent to 18 in the same way that that's 3 fourths of 18. So I have double checked my work there. So that is how to use the attack strategy in combination with the ratio, ratios and proportions graphic organizer, that's the schema of the problem, to help us solve this ratios and proportions problem. And I hope you'll tune into some of the other stair tailored to see how we can use the other schemas to solve different types of word problems. Thanks for tuning in.